Ah, welcome back to Think Tech. It's Wednesday. That means it's Trump week. I'm Jay Fidel. We like to connect the dots on Donald Trump. And there's certainly a lot of dots to connect. We have a lot of content to discuss with you. And Tim Apicella is on the other side of this. Uh, Tim, good morning. Good morning, Jay. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we're obviously in an impeachment trial right now, and it's, it looks like it's going into, uh, you know, the ninth inning without um, any witnesses, although that hasn't been actually voted on yet. Uh, can you give us a, a precis about uh, the remarks um, that were made in the closing, especially by the Republicans, and so far the questions that have been asked and answered in today's hearing? Yeah, I would. Um, I also would like to just do a quick little summary of what uh, Thomas Friedman said about kind of where we've been for the last three days. And I thought it was a really appropriate quote, and I'm just going to take a quick second. Um, Thomas Friedman, he uh, is well known, uh, writes for the New York Times, I believe, and he said the following. How can the truth that Donald Trump used taxpayer funds to try to force the president of Ukraine to sully the reputation of Joe Biden, a political rival, possibly break through this unique trifecta of a president without shame, backed by a party without spine, reinforced by a network without integrity. Boy, for me, he hit a, he hit a home run on that, that quotation. Yeah, for me, it's an understatement. That's my reaction to it. Nice, Thomas, but it's still an understatement. I won't go into the words that I might use for the same propositions. Anyway, so tell us what's been happening. Well, we, we, we've been hearing all sorts of, um, if you will, a defense that's indefensible. And that is they're, they're talking about everything but the facts of the trial, the facts of the case. Uh, they're spending a, a huge amount of time on, on Hunter Biden. And again, as we have said in previous programs, what does Hunter Biden have with the impeachment articles against Donald Trump? They don't. Yet that's where they're spending their time and energy on. Um, the other things is they're almost agreeing to the fact or the facts of the trial, but they're just saying there's no crime here. Look at Dershowitz. I mean, he's basically saying nothing is seen as impeachable. Well, how does he say that? When it's a 100% reversal of what he said during the Clinton trial, where he said these facts are considered crimes and they are to be held as impeachable items. So how do we get this big role reversal with Dershowitz? And how do we get the, um, the avoidance of the attorneys that are glossing over the facts and just saying, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden? Um, you know, I've, it's extraordinary that they make such um, inappropriate arguments. They misstate the facts. They misstate the law. It's really an outrage that grown men, especially lawyers and United States senators uh, and the lawyers for the Senate, um, you know, would would make those statements extraordinary, and yet there they go every day. And what and what strikes me is why they are making cover. That's my short answer. They're making cover for the Senate to to rule that uh, we don't need any further witnesses or evidence. They're making cover for the Senate to acquit him. And they're making cover for, you know, the people in the red states, his base, to continue supporting Trump. And all the while, uh, Trump is uh, out and about looking like uh, an unimpeachable president, uh, you know, doing all these other things, uh, signing, signing deals. Let's see, just some of the things. The uh, MCA deal, Mexico and Canada, has been cooking for a long time, but he elects to have a big fancy signature ceremony now, as if there was no impeachment going on, and rallies in New Jersey, uh, just as if there was no impeachment going on, and trying to do a one-sided, quote, settlement, end quote, in Israel, as if there was no impeachment going on, and raising tariffs in China against China, as if we hadn't had a trade agreement, uh, which he capitalized in two weeks ago. Now he's raised anything to get the needle off the impeachment hearing. It's extraordinary how hard he tries to avoid, you know, coming to grips with this proceeding. Um, and then, of course, he's tweeting. I find it remarkable that he's tweeting facts that are alternative facts. 
He's tweeting lies as he normally does. He must be in the 16,000 number already. Um, yeah, 16,000, yep. Yeah, and, and he's tweeting lies, but he's not coming to testify under oath. It's extraordinary how he throws this stuff under the, on, on the roadway in front of you, um, and you're supposed to listen to it. The whole thing is calculated to confuse us and provide cover for these guys to do the wrong thing. And indeed, there's a fair chance they will do the wrong thing. Anyway, what else do you take from it, Tim? Well, I take a couple items. Number one is, if it wasn't for the leak of uh, Bolton's manuscript, um, we wouldn't even be having nearly the discussions we are about the possibility of having direct witness testimony from from Mike uh, from Bolton and and or possible other documents. Uh, the question is whether that's going to actually take place or not. We'll know in a few hours. I guess we'll know by tomorrow. Um, that's an important part of this because. If there is no direct witness testimony, then we're gonna conclude this whole business and it'll be a sham. As I said last week, it'll be a sham trial. And the question is to what, what collective memory will the American voting public have that they just witnessed a sham trial with no direct testimony or witness? Well, a couple of thoughts on that, if I might. Um, number one is, uh, while he's tweeting all around, he's on a campaign against Bolton, trying to uh, attack Bolton, discredit Bolton, uh, talk about Bolton's book. He's actually trying the case by Twitter. That's what he's doing. And he's got all his friends around him doing the same thing. It's a big move now is to discredit Bolton in the possibility uh, that, the, that it's going to leak about the book and in the possibility that, that Bolton will, will get a chance to testify. And so he's trying the case. He's trying the case for his base. That rhymes. He's trying the case for, you know, the people in the Senate who follow him blindly. Robots, automatons. Okay, that's, you know, that's one element here. But something else you said I would like to comment on. You know, um, they will likely quit because they're in lockstep with McConnell. And Trump has, has been working behind the scenes to keep them in lockstep. Nobody's broken ranks yet. None of them. 53-47, isn't it? Every single vote. And you don't see anything different than that. It's extraordinary that we pay their salaries, give them all these perks. We have the Capitol building. We allow them to run around the Capitol building. And they do nothing. Nothing. And they just follow his instructions. It is reminiscent of Hitler and the Enabling Act and the Reichstag in 1933 where they voted, the Reichstag, both houses, voted to give Hitler all the power. It is chilling as a comparison. But here's the thing. You asked you know, whether the public will remember this, the travesty of it, the kangaroo court of it. You'll remember. They, will they remember? And the answer is we don't know for sure. Because Trump will try to distract them between now, say February, uh, when this ends, um, and November, he'll try to get all kinds of other things on the plate, uh, change the news cycle a hundred times between now and he's very good at this and in November. And the result, he thinks, will be the public will forget what happened. And if they were angered by failure to put in evidence or allow evidence and witnesses and the uh, total travesty of acquitting him, uh, you know, he, he may be right. He, he will try hard to do that. And I think one of the things that he will do after the acquittal, Tim, is he's going to attack the press like crazy. He's going to be attacking everything they say, the New York Times, the Washington Post. Um, and, you know, he'll be encouraged. He'll be emboldened far more than before. He'll be worse, much worse uh, after he's acquitted. I don't know why the Republicans don't realize that. Um, and he's, he's going to be... Uh, completely out of control, and he's going to be attacking the media so that to change the, uh, what, what might otherwise be a concern about people remembering the travesty of this trial. Well, they may remember. Nevertheless, uh, I think a number of people, a lot of people will remember what happened here, and I think uh, Trump stands a good chance of losing Congress in the November elections. He may even win as the president because of his machinations and his cheating on, um, you know, and suppressing voters and, and bringing in uh, other countries to manipulate our media. But 
he may nevertheless, and he may nevertheless win with all that. And if he wins, he's got to face Congress. And if he faces Congress, he may find Congress is a different kettle of fish. Uh, the Democrats may wind up controlling the Senate as well as the House. Then he's a lame duck for, the, for that second term, the whole second term. This is, you know, it's, it's terrible to have him stay. It's terrible to have him win. But if it happens, there's a fair chance he won't have the Congress behind him anymore. And we can take some distant comfort in that possibility. I, I, I would agree with a lot of what you just said, but I, I, I say, let's look at the polls right now. Let's look at the polling of even Republicans think that it's not a bad idea to have witnesses come in. And those, those numbers are in the high 70s, that there should be additional witnesses. I think that's remarkable. And again, I, I think if witnesses are not allowed, this will be enough of a stain for even those in the red states to remember, hey, this wasn't a fair fight. This wasn't a fair, a fair trial. As much as I know he has a loyal following, I think Americans still say to themselves, you know, let's have, let's have fairness in our, our, our you know, in, when it comes to justice and, and, and a, a trial. And I think without witnesses or documents, it'll be very, very apparent to everyone that it's not fair and this thing was a complete jam. So I think they will remember it. And, and you're right, Jay, uh, Donald Trump will do everything in his powers, not only for him to discredit the media and change the subject, but he's gonna have his administration chiefs do it. Uh, Pompeo comes to mind right now of how he lambasted uh, the NPR reporter, uh, Mary Louise Kelly, and Trump is giving them nothing but accolades and praise for beating up the press. So you're dead spot on about his 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 willingness to always throw the press under the bus and, 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 and further throw them under the bus between now and the election. You're absolutely right. Well, don't forget Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman and the tail that wagged the dog. Um, and that is a fabricated war, a war that's generated for political or public relations purposes. And uh, I think we've seen a certain amount of that already in this administration. But, you know, the best way for a given autocrat uh, is to enhance his, pa to enhance his power, uh, is to create a war and then be a hero. And, um, you know, and tell people that they need to get behind him uh, in order to deal with the war. This is very problematic because he's already demonstrated a kind of inclination to do those things. So we have the Middle East, which is a tinderbox. We have his cockamamie settlement deal with uh, Israel uh, without, without including the Palestinians in the deal. It's extraordinary. Um, I, I doubt that's gonna work. And in fact, it may fan the flames. I think it is fanning the flames. Uh, and other things that he's doing on the international front that will fan the flames. To say nothing, to say nothing about the virus, coronavirus. And right after this break, Tim, I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about what he has done, what the CDC has done, and what Chuck Schumer had to say about it. We'll be right back after this short break. Aloha, I'm Lillian Cumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dalen Yanagita, one of our hosts of our Business in Hawaii talk show on the Think Tech Hawaii. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home. We are streamed live on Think Tech Weekly at 2 p.m. on Thursdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. I am Dela Yanagita, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, seriously worrying that uh, Trump will create an international incident, um, controversy, confrontation, uh, or it, even if he doesn't, Tim, even if he doesn't create an international um, confrontation, fact is things are in place already to have one. 
Even if he didn't, there'd be things happening such as Iran. Who knows? What, and North Korea just waiting for an opportunity to make trouble. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we have a serious problem. I think it's true. I, I agree that he has a pre-planned strategy, but it's not working as you might imagine or anyone. Uh, let's just give one example. This attack on Bolton, all right? I think everyone has to underestimate just how powerful and, and respected Bolton is, not only as a Republican, but as a conservative. And as try as they might throw Bolton under the bus, um, that may not work so well with a lot of these Republicans. Well, you know, let me let me offer an alternative possibility, maybe one that is compelling. Uh, so Bolton doesn't get thrown under the bus. At least he is permitted to testify. And McConnell has suggested that. And the polls show that, as you said, 75 percent of the country wants to see witnesses and documents, although I think that really means 75 percent of the country wants to see Bolton. Uh, they want to see uh, confirmation, affirmation of what they have heard is in his book regardless of, uh, you know, Trump's campaign to discredit him, maybe because of it. Okay, so there's a fair chance that McConnell can't stop that, uh, that there's, there are people leaving the ranks uh, in the Senate and demanding that he allow Bolton to testify. And then what happens is there's a vote on Bolton. Um, not on all of them, but on Bolton. Uh, I, 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 I hesitate to think what would happen if we got into a thing about the Bidens. That would be just ridiculous. But Bolton, so Bolton testifies. And there's a lot of cross-examination, and they try to discredit him in his testimony in the Senate, and they make all kinds of stink about him and uh, what a bad person he is and how he's disloyal. Trump, Trump called him um, a, a um, uh, uh, what's, the most, uh, what's the most, the strongest possible term? Uh, anyway, he's, he's called him all kinds of names in the last day or so. Treasonous or traitor. A traitor, thank you. Uh, and so, you know, um, it's not clear that even if Bolton testified in a way that Democrats would like to see him testify, in a way that's consistent with his forthcoming book, that his testimony will get through unscathed. He'll be subject to some blistering cross-examination in that hearing. Okay, so then... We have that. And the 75% of the country can say they had their way. We had a witness. He was an important witness. And that's over. And now, Bolton, who is, you know, has is, is got bandages all over from the blistering cross-examination, um, has been heard. Okay, the vote goes forward. The vote to acquit or to impeach. What do you think is going to happen? You know, do you think McConnell is going to lose his moxie there? Uh, is he going to, you know, is he going to lose control of that vote, the vote to impeach or acquit? What do you think? Because I don't think he's going to lose that that leverage. I think he'll be able to control that. And the result is that even after Bolton testifies, there'll be an acquittal. What do you think? Well, I think that's being played out right now with McConnell. That's why he announced early about the fact that he doesn't have the votes to um, overturn or your block potential Republicans who want to vote for witnesses. His strategy is to let these poor Republicans that might have just started to grow a spine get completely bludgeoned by their constituents and, and from the news media and from Fox News and from Trump and from everyone. So he's, he's starting to implement that strategy early on. So yes, he's definitely going to try it again. You say, don't even think about voting for impeachment and removal of office. And I think he'll be successful at that. I don't think we have a prayer that Donald Trump's gonna be removed from office. Yeah, right, because he's got control on that issue. And uh, the, you don't, you won't get 75% to say uh, that uh, Trump should be acquit uh, impeached. Um, you'll get you know a much smaller percentage, maybe just over half when you go on that question. But anyway, I mean, this is, you know, this is a historical moment. Uh, we're talking about the making of a dictator. We're talking about the emergence of an, a Hitler-esque type character running the whole government as a sole proprietorship and doing what he wants. If he is acquitted, I think we're going to see that. And it will be very scary and it will affect everybody in this country. I don't think people fully understand how it will affect them. Um, but every federal rule, 
um, every possible statute, uh, every possible executive order um, is something that it could affect you. Uh, and on top of that, he's messing things up globally. Um, and, uh, you know, that will affect us too. I don't think we can assume anymore that today will, that tomorrow will be like today and it'll all be just fine. Even though that's what Trump said, um, you know, after the, uh, the attack on the American base in Iraq, he said, sleep well tonight. Really? In fact, he was lying. 34 soldiers were, were wounded, shell-shocked as a result of that. He lied to us, again, on a critical thing. I wonder how the military guys feel about that. And now, most recently, he said the same thing uh, with regard to um, the coronavirus. He said, he said, not to be concerned. Uh, don't have to worry. Really? I, you know, how did he, does he have information we haven't seen that he can say such a thing? Uh, and Senator Chuck Schumer got up and made a statement in the middle of the impeachment um, proceedings a couple days ago to remind us that the CDC has the power to declare a health emergency and immediately spill $85 million into health care and protection against the epidemics. But the CDC, and that's another way of saying Trump, hasn't done that. It, ha it didn't do it up to that point when Schumer made his statement, and it hasn't done it since. So Trump still takes the same position, small stuff. Uh, don't worry about it. I worry about it. We've had several shows here on, uh, you know, on Think Tech, which make me worry a lot about it. And the numbers you read every day in the, in the New York Times, the Washington Post, makes me worry about it. What is Trump going to do about that? He's not doing anything. He's not even releasing the funds to declare an emergency and take, uh, you know, health, health um, you know, steps to protect the country. Uh, I find that quite remarkable. I, I, I think I see um, kind of a polarization here. On one hand, you're right, he's not releasing 85 million. But on the other hand, I've never seen the CDC act with such speed to start monitoring people at all these these airports uh, in the in the country. I mean, lightning speed to start basically testing people as they're you know. It, coming into the airport. Uh, we haven't seen that before. Even with the Ebola scare uh, during the Obama administration, they moved kind of clumsily, clumsily and slow. Not this time. So something's really going on here as far as I'm concerned, because I don't see my, my federal government move with this kind of speed and efficiency. And it is happening now. And um, I just have to ask the question, is nothing to worry about? Well, I don't agree with that. And Donald Trump, as usual, is beyond 16,000 lies, and I think it's just one more to add to the list. Right. You know, on top of, you know, his dismissal of the uh, earthquake damage and the storm damage in Puerto Rico and all those other humanitarian issues, he's really not doing, you know, and the 85 million, it, it wouldn't go to closing airports or, um, you know, taking temperature of arrivals. Uh, it would go to looking at the genome. What's, what I find interesting is the Chinese, although their health system is in many ways, uh, you know, below Western standards, their science isn't. And uh, their scientists uh, have um, mapped uh, the genome for this virus uh, immediately, and they have it. And more than that, they have shared the genome uh, with the world. And, and it's kind of a race to find a vaccine, to, you know, to take a look at this genome and find a vaccine that will save people from, from the scourge, which is going faster every day. I mean, the, the, you know, since yesterday, a thousand more people in China have caught the disease and a number of people have died over it. Uh, it's, it's getting way up there. We, the world, needs to take strong action. That 85 million would help the United States stay at the top of the, of the medical research, um, you know, community. Um, fact is, I think other nations are moving faster. Novartis was recently quoted to say, with given the current um, you know, efforts, it's going to take a year uh, before any vaccine will be, will be uh, uh, created. And so I, I don't think Trump understands that. Maybe it's ignorance, but more likely it's just not caring about people, not caring about this issue, and only caring oh, about, about himself. The stock market. Oh, come on. He's worried about the stock market flowing because on the first real day of the announcement, the stock market fell 400 points as a concern about what's going on in China and, you know, possible ramifications of that. Uh, secondly is, how rare is it? 
how rare is it that China has been forthcoming to share information and share it with everybody? That is really an anomaly. And I, that, again, is just one more piece of evidence to say, hey, this thing is a lot more serious than we're led to believe. Yeah, and, and so there's another uh, mouse that roared issue. Um, maybe up its sleeve is that, uh, you know, if and when, and I think it's mostly when, this gets to be uh, clearly a, a, a world epidemic, uh, then uh, he, can, he can rise uh, to greater power and um, take over as more of a more of an autocrat in order to um, you know step in and solve the problem which i think he'll have a lot of trouble doing this is what cynthia and i'm sorry we we haven't had her on the program lately she's you know hasn't been able to come in but this is what cynthia was concerned about as he would find some excuse to declare a national emergency and basically suspend all sorts of constitutional provisions Right, over the wall, but not this. You know, I guess, you know what, what I, we have a minute left, Tim, and I just want to cover one other thing and get your reaction. That is, history is unfolding. History is unfolding in the Senate right now, today. Those guys lying and, you know, using contorted, uh, inappropriate arguments to try to confuse the senators um, and, 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 and or parlay Trump's, um, arguments through their mouths to confuse everyone and to distract everyone. And uh, the Senate will probably vote to acquit. They will be judged by history. Unfortunately, they'll be out of office by the time it takes, it takes effect. But I think, you know, in the years to come, the United States will be judged by what happens in the Senate now. And the, certainly the people who make this vote will be judged by what happens in the Senate now, and the judgment will not be kind. At the same time, we, the people who live under this government, uh, we will be judged also, and we will suffer mightily, every one of us, by virtue of what happens. Comment, you have 20 seconds. Comment is, I couldn't agree with you more, and where are, where are the, uh, the people out in the street? Where did they go? Where is the protest that is so badly needed? Where are the calls to their uh, to their senators and their congressmen saying, knock this off? They're deaf, they're mute, they're not saying a word. All right, and Tim. Thank you for having me on. All right, next week. I really enjoy these conversations. I think they are important for the public discourse. Aloha. Aloha.